Hey there, everyone. It's Chipmunk back with you for another week of <laughs> impromptu last minute stuff. I, I thought summer was going to be easier to have more time to schedule stuff. I'm never going to learn. I swear, I'm never, ever, ever going to learn. <laughs> but hey, optimism is a good thing. And I'm going to continue to be optimistic, even in the face of all reality. So yeah, I have all these plans again, but I kind of ran out of time. So I'm just going to do this impromptu quick little thing. Okay, so what I've got today is just a batch of books that, you know, go to the bookstore, buy a whole ton. Well, I didn't buy all these at once. Okay, but... Still, a, a whole bunch of books that I bought recently and enjoyed them and just wanted to pass along, like you do. So. I haven't got a lot of time, so let's get to it. Book number one, A Case in Oak Haven, and it is by Jake Westbrook. This is an independently published book. It is available on Amazon. I'm not sure where else it's available. I'm sorry. Um, I'll try to put links to all this down in the description. None of these uh Books are compensating me. No publishers, no authors, no nothing. Just really like these books. Um, so this is an independent one. This is a cozy mystery. This is set in the 1940s in a small town in autumn. I mean, it, it, it's pretty darned cozy. It's a fun little mystery. Jake Westbrook is also a YouTuber. He kind of made his name more or less by putting up these vintage music playlists. That's how I found them. And uh, they got really popular and then everybody started doing that type of thing. He also started up a podcast with his brother McLean. And that is called Yesterday Today. The show is basically just bringing you um, old time radio. So if you're into that sort of thing, which I totally am, and they do one of those things where, as hosts, they're sitting in the radio show presenting the shows, so they've got, you know, bookended with them, and then in the middle, because there are two shows to each episode, however, they also have their own little story going on, and it's quite fun to tune in. They put a lot of work into it, and um, definitely I'll put down the show link in the description so please do go and support them it's it's so much fun very enjoyable this one is felix ever after by kason kason i'm sorry i'm gonna say kason i don't know calendar i'm, I'm pretty sure calendar is the pronunciation of the last name i just happened to see this one go by on twitter um the author was posting something or other about their book, and I was like, oh, that sounds neat. Okay, yeah, I'm totally going to go buy a copy. And I totally did. Went and bought a copy, and I read it, and it's really, really good. This is about the titled Felix. Felix is early 20s, uh, in college, an art student. They're queer, they're black, um, lots of marginalizations happening at once. They are in the process of discovering who they are and figuring out love at the same time. There's also a bit of mystery to it. So basically, someone starts sending them messages, really mean things, and they think they know who it is that it's someone at their school, uh, but they can't prove it. So they come up with this plan to kind of catfish them and, and drag them out. And it predictably does not go as planned. There's a lot happening in this book, but it's very, it's very true. The character is very real. They're not perfect. They make mistakes, uh, but they're very sweet and you root for them. And, and as a mother, as a mother, oh my gosh, I'm reading this book and I'm like, okay, I'm old enough to be your mama. Why are you day drinking in the park for shame? That, 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 that's what got me. <laughs> that's what got me. Everything else I'm fine with, but the day drinking in the park, heavens no, you stop that right now. <laughs> still, still a really, really good book and really sympathetic character. Highly recommended. Okay, back to nonfiction for another nostalgia trip. I am really big into the 20s through the 50s, basically, um, as a nostalgic 
time. I, I like reading books from that time and movies and the old magazines, the music, etc. I recognize it was not really like that. Real life is never as advertised. Um, it was not really a great time for many people, but you know, life. <laughs> life is never perfect. Life is messy. Um, it's just something that I enjoy. It's hard to parse. Basically, it's just a cozy blanket that you wrap yourself in and you realize that the real world is outside that blanket, but you don't have to face it right at the moment. I mean, something like that. Something like that. Anyway, this book, which has a tag on the cover that I couldn't get off, is called Finding Betty Crocker by Susan Marks. And this is a history of the character, Betty Crocker. Yes, she is a character. She was never a real person. Betty Crocker was a character created for General Mills, or the company that was prior to General Mills. And um, that was a way for them to relate to their customer and many other companies did the same thing they all had their characters uh that was you know this friendly woman who could relate to the housewife and her troubles and give advice and recipes and all that so it's a really really interesting history about uh, the company, the kitchens, the Betty Crocker kitchens that they had that people could tour. Everything, everything that went into creating this character, there was so much more there than you know. She even had a radio show. She had uh, people behind her who represented her. Uh, this one lady was basically Betty Crocker to the public and went to Hollywood and did all this other stuff for promotion. Really, really fascinating pop culture history here. Back to fiction, we have Skylight by Jose Saramago. I'm hoping I'm saying that right as well. This is um, it's an, it's an older story, newer edition, and this is about mm -hmm, the inhabitants of an apartment building in Lisbon 1940s. So, you know, it's one of those where every chapter is a different story about a different person in this apartment. I love stuff like that. It's really well written, and as I say, everybody in here has a different story, so there are different things going on. They intersect in different ways, uh, but everybody has their own individual stuff going on. And they are all really real, genuine. The only thing about this is uh, maybe it's not he's a male author, I don't know. But there are uh, points, not a ton, but... He tends to comment on the way women look, uh, especially, maybe, maybe I was just noticing it more, to be fair, but, uh, he tends to comment when they are not particularly attractive. And it's like, okay, I, I get it. She was a bit overweight. You've mentioned that before. Yeah, okay, this, this woman, um, is not put together like a model. You have mentioned this, it, okay, <laughs> and and that's okay, buddy. That's okay. I'm sure you're not exactly uh, gracing the cover of fashion magazines yourself. So you know, let's be fair here and tone it down a little. Um, but that said, it, it wasn't overdone. Um, that's just to point out if that's something that's going to instantly turn you off. Other than that, it, it was very well written, and I did enjoy it. Next up. Uh, an Artist of the Floating World by Kazuo Ishiguro. I love me some Kazuo Ishiguro. I was that nerdy kid in eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, who did their book report on the remains of the day. <laughs> that was me. I loved the book, loved the movie. I, I've i liked everything that he's written that I have read. Um, well, I wasn't real big on the one about the clones. Can I never remember what that's called. But this one is very good. Very good. You know, he is one of those literary guys that still it's really, really easy to read. So you feel like you're getting a deep story, but you know, something relatable at the same time. This is about a man um, of money. He was an artist for a long time, and um, he was doing pretty well. Then World War II happened. And he threw himself into the patriotic side, basically, um, in Japan, 
that this is set in Japan, I should have mentioned it before. Um, <laughs> but he threw himself into the, uh, yes, let's, let's go after the world because Japan is awesome and better than everyone. And he, that sort of attitude was, of course, prevalent at the time. Uh, so he threw himself into that. And then after the war was over, um, that attitude was not so popular. Now, this is one of those novels that's down to perspective. It is told by this guy from his perspective. And there are clues that maybe his perspective is unreliable, but it's usually not directly alluded to. There is a movie adaption of this that I happened on by chance. It's currently, it's on Prime. It is a Japanese adaption. And it stars Ken Watanabe from um, Last Samurai and so many other things. It kind of makes things a little more clear that weren't exactly clear in the book. So I recommend both of them. Uh, just to explain the title, An Artist of the Floating World, the floating world is referred to as uh, the like nightlife, like nightclubs and um, gambling establishments and prostitutes or, or what have you. That sort of world because it's not like a concrete real world of the day. And I mention this partly because it is an actual term. Apparently, there is an art exhibit coming to a museum near me where they talk about the floating world. It's part of the title of the exhibit. So I was like, oh, he didn't just make that up. It's an actual thing. <laughs> the things we learn. The Custom of the Country by Edith Wharton. I have never read Edith Wharton. I've never seen The Age of Innocence, which was pretty popular when, you know, what was that, 92, 91? So I was a preteen, which is not exactly the demographic, but I was getting into movies and somehow I never... Anyway, uh, so this is... I really like this one. <laughs> this is about um, a 19th century gal who uh, is going out on her own and doing everything she can to get into society. She is a beauty, so she has that in her favor to help her make an entrance. And she's also very poor, so she has to use her wits and pretty much anything and everything she has available to her, um, kind of in a Becky Sharp sort of way, because she's not the most sympathetic character. She has to use anything and everything, and she will use anything and everything. And the thing is that it works. It works. And she ascends the social ladder, but nothing's ever good enough for her. She ends up marrying three times, and even the third time, when she's really high up, there's still not enough. She's not the most sympathetic character, but you end up as fascinated by her as pretty much everyone in the book. And this, as a matter of fact, there are some other very good characters, and there's one part where something happens to a character. If you read the book, you will know what I'm talking about. That was not wholly unexpected, but it was unexpected enough that I went, oh my gosh, while well, I was reading it aloud. I, <laughs> I don't recall ever having done that with a book ever. So I, yeah, this one is really good. Read this one. Last, but certainly not least, I am saving the best for last. This is If on Winter's Night, A Traveler by Italo Calvino. I have never read anything by Italo Calvino. <laughs> I'm saying that carefully. Uh, but, oh boy, was this a gateway drug and a half. I'm going to have to read everything by this guy now. This book. I don't know how to describe this book. <laughs> Okay, I'll try. This book is a bunch of little unfinished stories. And there is a connecting story. All these little unfinished stories are supposedly different books that only parts of them have been found. However, they may all be the same book, <laughs> just translated differently, put out differently in different countries and there uh, there are these readers who are trying to track down 
the different copies. And every time they read one, they go, oh, I have to read more. I have to learn more. Oh, well, that's not the real copy. Then they, they have to go and find this other copy that's under another title. Then they read that and find out it's a different story. But then they have to find out about that one. What I realized after reading this, what I realized as a writer is that all these unfinished stories are unfinished stories. This is his unfinished story bin. <laughs> this is what you do with all those stories that you don't know how to finish. This is what you do with them. It's genius. It's absolute genius. And unfortunately, nobody else can do this now because he already did it. Read the book. You'll see what I mean. And you'll just be like, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Read it. Go out, get it, read it as soon as you can. Okay, well, that's all I've got for the time being. But, you know, as readers, I'm sure I will have more very soon. Uh, in the meantime, if you can recommend stuff for me to read, I'm, I would be much obliged. I can always use more to read, right? I mean, who needs to, who needs time to do anything else? Who needs to work? Who needs to eat? Who needs to sleep? Let's just read. Yeah. So until then, I will see you next week and hopefully I will plan something out a little more, but you know, I, I, I hope this was interesting enough. And, uh, in the meantime, happy reading. I'll see you then. Bye.